acid etch removes, I can't even say that word, something from concrete and render prior to painting. I'm gonna paint the floor and paint the wall. I think it'll make it look nice, I've got a new machine coming in there. But um, yeah, like this workshop floor used to be painted gray, but um, after about a year, it all flaked up. I just got it off eBay. I think it was some Chinese paint or something, and it was a complete waste of time. And when I did the pit floor, you put acid down first, and it gives it like a key, and it's worked really well, and it's had oil and all sorts over, and it's holding out really well. So what we're going to do now, I'm just basically going to chuck acid everywhere, and then hopefully tomorrow we can prime it and paint it. So... I'm not sure this is the correct way to do this, but it's the easiest way. You can see it all fizzing everywhere. It's, it's hydrochloric acid. So it's just keying the concrete, just so the paint can stick to it, because otherwise there's all sorts of, there's 30 years of grease and all sorts on top of there otherwise. And then I'm gonna brush it in. I've just swept this floor and blown it like twice, but look, the acid, it's removed like, yeah, it's doing its job anyway. The next day, the paint has arrived. This is time we've gone for stone grey. So we're gonna use stone grey on the walls. And then on the floor, I've got like this process of damp shield. So that's moisture proof membrane. And we have to add a hardener with that as well. So it's not, it's not some normal paint you just paint on the floor and it flakes off. This is like some real good two pack stuff. So we're gonna do this bit first. Just like that. Right, now we've got the floor to do. So I'm just gonna wash these out. I'm gonna, I've actually got to read the instructions because I've got to add this hardener with it. So we're gonna see how that goes. All right, that's the hardener in. I hope I've got enough. Looks like honey. And apparently. Right. There we go. Right, I've got my I've got my brush. This is actually a threaded bark of this pants thick. This brush is uh, actually got a bit of threaded bar on the end of it working really well but I need to pull my finger out because this stuff is either real thick or it's, it's like it's going off but it's really good what no stay away that's it we nearly got the paint all there now um no good cat so we're going to wait till tomorrow and then we're going to put the top coat on. A few moments later, the other cat decided he wanted to run through the nicely painted wet floor. Right, so now we're going to go for the top coat process, which is the same. Get the hardener in, then we've got 20 minutes to get it on the floor. So let's do this before it goes off. Hopefully this is going to, oh look, hopefully this is going to look really good, but we'll see. So, what's it going to look like? This is very, very satisfying, apart from the bit I got on the floor there, but it doesn't matter because I think I might end up painting the whole floor because this looks amazing and it's actually really decent paint, so I'm really pleased with that. So, here we are. Oh, watch out for that, nearly stood in that. Da, 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 da. quite easy actually isn't it just the way you can pick it up from each end with the pallet tines and then we can move it about wherever we want it i like the color of it as well because it's the same color as my car so i've got my scissors and we're going to start by unpacking there we go 
I haven't got a knife. I don't know where one is. And the first thing I found was these scissors. It's like Christmas and my birthday. All come at once. All right. What's under here? Now, here's the plasma cutter. Right, so we've got it inside now. Just taking all the wrapping off and everything. We've got the plasma cutter there and the table here. I've actually gone for the water bed, but I'm going to explain that in the next video when Swift Cut come, because part of the package, when you get one, they, um, they come and train you up, obviously, how to use it and everything. So that's going to be quite an interesting video. So we've got some intelligent people coming to show us how to use it. So I've finished painting the floor. I'm going to wait for that to go off. I'm now going to get this in. The next thing we've got, I've got a steel rack going just here. So we've got some sheets of steel that we can obviously, when we need different size sheets of steel, we can just pick one off and just lift it in and put it straight onto the table. So that is the next job. We're getting the steel in and all the steel sheets. 120 mil box section. And then what I've also got as well, 25 mil thick steel. Then we've got 15, we've got 10, eight, five and three. And the reason I've done that is to like get me started. So when I um, when I get this plasma cutter set up in the next couple of days, I've got enough sheet to get me started on what I ever want to do. So like the 25 mil will be for like JCB brackets that go onto these bits just here. Um, and then all these other bits, you know, three mil will be like for signs or bits and bobs, whatever I want, just so I've got everything in stock. So it's going to go on that wall there. The plasma cutter is going to go around the other side. And then when I want a bit of sheet steel, I'll just pick it off and put it straight onto the plasma cutter. And within a few minutes, hopefully, we'll be able to have some uh, usable parts or whatever. But um, I'm quite excited about this. So, oh, these bits as well. This is sort of my uh, cow trailer that I've been doing. So just some more spares. moved in very easy because we've obviously got pallet tine holes there and on the side so you can actually move it wherever you want technically you could actually take it out into the middle of a field as long as you've got a generator big enough to supply the plasma cutter you can just sort of cut and do whatever you want with it wherever you want so the next video at the end of next week is when they come out and train us um, on how to use it because that's in, like i said that's involved in the package um, quite looking forward to that um, so what we've had to do here, I've obviously painted the floor, so very pleased with that. Um, got all these bits to put together. We've got the screen, we've got to put that together. I've also made this little, this little frame to keep the plasma cutter off the floor out of the dirt. So that's up there out the way. Got a 63 amp power supply for that. And then that plug there will feed this. And then our air supply filtration system. That's obviously gonna go up there like that so that pipe's going to run into there and then the pipe's going to come down the wall into the back of the plasma cutter under there what we've got under here look obviously i said i went for the water table this tap that's what drains the water table so we're going to put a pipe onto that and curl it up under here so if we want to drain the water that sits in the bed we can just drain it and run it outside the door or into the one of the drains or whatever because it's just normal water in it um yeah, quite excited about this, really. It's going to be excellent when this is working next week. So one of the other things um, we did in one of the last videos when I went to have a look at these tables where they were being made, this subsoil leg here, we actually we took a photograph of it on my phone and then sent it, emailed it to the plasma cutter to that there, and then we scaled it and then it cut the new leg out just there. So that's obviously 20-odd mil plate. Um, the Hypertherm 125, I think, will cut 30-odd mil steel. So we'll need to look into that. I know it will definitely pierce 25, but I think uh, cutting from side to side, I'm sure it does 30-odd. But we're going to have a look at all that next week. I'm um, going to experiment as well. So I've got a friend, Crawford's Farm, if you ever watch him on YouTube. He sent me like a sign he wants, because if you've got thin steel, we can cut signs out and stuff. So he's 
he's WhatsApping me a picture of what he wants cutting out and then I'm going to send it to the plasma cutter. We're going to cut some signs out for him or some brackets he needs or whatever he wants and then we're going to post it to him. So I, thought, I like the idea that you can email any bits to this wherever you are, Australia, anywhere around the world and we can cut them out which hopefully it'll be really good because like say if you're in Australia and you need a part instead of putting it in the post and sending it here and costing loads of money and then getting stuck in customs or something like that you can just send us an email of the part and just cut it out with this so it saves no end of time thanks for watching I'm just saying goodbye to the MacDon people bye everybody bye. and remember goodbye see you all soon goodbye